it's very common for people to say that certain horror movies, especially like, you know, ones that are all blood and guts, are an acquired taste. Because, you know, most people are just, you know, not like uh, totally, they don't have like the, uh, the stomach to tolerate such, you know, graphic violence, you know. Like, films like I Spit on Your Grave and Cannibal Holocaust are, like, you know, total acquired taste just because of their graphic content. I'm not a huge fan of them, per se, but, you know, because I don't always have the strongest stomach for, you know, extreme splatter shit. But, like I said, a lot of people, you know, consider those types of movies an acquired taste. They're basically, you know... You know, just uh, made for shock value and whatnot. But it's very rare for, you know, for people to say that the um, that dark comedy movies are more of an acquired taste as well. Because, you know, when people hear the word comedy, like when they want to go to like a comedy movie, they want to go to that movie or go see that movie in the theaters to laugh. Like, when they see, like, a, uh, like, a dark comedy movie, they'll be just, like, totally put off by, like, you know, the darker elements. You know, dark comedies are usually, you know, comedy movies with, like, uh, a lot of, like, dark elements. And, like, murder and, uh, you know, crime, robberies and whatnot. See, you know, throughout, you know, the years, dark comedies have like uh been sort of hit and miss like um there's mo there's uh dark comedies that have suddenly become like total classics these days like for instance you know bad santa you know the cable guy although that was mixed reviews you know heathers you know world's greatest dad with uh robin williams and um you know a few martin scorsese movies the king of comedy the Wolf of Wall Street, you know, those are considered dark comedies. And, like, uh, you know, especially the Coen brothers, they've made their share of dark comedy movies like, you know, Fargo, The Big Lebowski, Raising Arizona, Oh Brother, Where Art Thou, and uh, Burn After Reading. Those are as dark as they can get. And Tarantino, Pulp Fiction is, you know, a bit of a dark comedy, you know, and, you know, Train Spotting, Danny Boyle film. You know, Danny Boyle has made a few, like, uh, comedies with darker elements. And, of course, Guy Ritchie's. Some of Guy Ritchie's movies are darker. You know, Snatch, Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels. And other stuff like Kiss, Kiss, Bang, Bang, and uh, In Bruges. You know, I'm going to go on and I'm just going to waste the video. But, but then there's, like, movies that you know, that are not as well received because they kind of push the boundaries a little too farther than how a certain dark comedy should. Like, for instance, like, the one that I think started that kind of that kind of trend was this movie called Very Bad Things, you know, which is, like, the uh, writing-directing debut of Peter Berg, you know, a year after he co-starred in Copland, and he has been in other movies... You know, Very Bad Things has, like, you know, a lot of graphic violence, a lot of screaming. And that's why it got such mixed reviews. You know, like, because... And Siskel and Ebert especially hated it because, you know, it was just so empty-headed. But, I mean, I thought it was good, you know. But I kind of prefer American Psycho, if I had to choose. And that's another, you know, com black comedy that, uh, you know, became such a such a classic but very bad things you know kind of started that trend with you know dark comedies that go above and beyond with its dark nature you know and like like a few examples that followed that trend that i think some i don't even own like this movie called vulgar which is directed by brian johnson a longtime collaborator of uh kevin smith that movie push the boundaries far too, you know, farther than it should because, you know, it involves, you know, a birthday party clown becoming a transvestite, you know, performer and like uh, he gets, you know, gang raped and I don't own that movie per se, but I have seen it 
and it's pretty fucked up, but I'll probably give it another chance one of these days. And I could go on to list a bunch of uh, other comedies that, you know, went above and beyond, but then that would just, like, suck up the, the video. But uh, I consider this particular movie to be in between. Like, you know, it's not necessarily a classic per se, but it is good in its own way. It did receive, like, a, it did receive positive reviews, like a 60-something percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Clay Pigeon is a very good movie. It's a uh, dark comedy that uh, falls along the lines of, uh, you know, mostly Coen Brothers. And, like, um, you know, it's about, like, uh, this, uh, this drifter who, like, um, becomes involved with a serial killer. Like, uh, it's, and, like, uh, Jean Garofalo, she's, like, an FBI agent who comes to investigate what's been going on. And, like, um, see, like, uh, this is, like, the second um, film in which, uh, you know, Joaquin Phoenix and Vince Vaughn, you know, co-star, you know, were in the same movie. Like, a year after the movie Return to Paradise, you know, a prison film that follows along the lines of Midnight Express. This is, uh, this movie's pretty underrated. And, um... You know, I love its film noir qualities. Like I said, I'm a huge film noir fan. And I love this uh, this particular film, you know. This, uh, and, uh, and it actually has a pretty good soundtrack. You know, six of the bands on the soundtrack album are actually a few of my favorites. You know, The Verve Pipe is on it, Tonic, Old 97s, Lyle Lovett even. And uh, fucking uh, some good stuff on it. Like, uh, you know, it's a few of the others I'm trying to get into. You know, there's another band that, uh, you know, that I'm already into. But uh, I kind of forgot about the name of it. But uh, one band that's on the soundtrack but does not get the recognition that it deserves is this band. This is an alternative rock band called Collapsus. And uh, they have made, like, other albums before this, but most of them were, like, mostly EPs. And, like, it does not get the record. And, like, um, as far as I'm concerned, this is, like, the one and only band, uh, one and only album that this band, uh, you know, released under, like, a major record label, uh, Universal Music. And the album is called Dirty Wake. <laughs> kind of a weird name, but, you know... Collapsus is a pretty, is a total 90s group, you know, one of the members nowadays, you know, he collaborates with like uh, the band My Morning Jacket. This band has long since broken up, but you know, some of the stuff on it, on this shit is actually pretty awesome. Like, uh, and like, but the song that appears on the Clay Pigeon soundtrack does not appear on this album or any other, or any of the EPs that they made. Because the song on the soundtrack is actually the theme song to the movie. Like, um, I guess it's called The Ballad of Lester Long, you know, the uh, lead character in the movie. And so uh, that has not appeared on any other albums. But uh, the song uh, Wonderland, which is track number six, actually has appeared on an episode of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And I can see why. It has that kind of tone. This band is, like, totally 90s. Like, um, you know, and there's, like, a lot of 90s music that appears in Buffy the in Buffy the Vampire Slayer. You know, a bunch of good shit, you know. Like, um, I would personally recommend this band, you know. They have not had, like, any airplay because this is, like, the only album, like, only total full-length album in existence that they've ever made. I found this at a uh, Goodwill in Des Plaines. You know, like I said, I always shop for music over there. Um, I, can't, I can't tell you, like, oh, Sister Hazel, you know, that's another band that appears on Clay Pigeons. I can't, like, totally tell you, like, uh, who, who, what bands are similar. I can probably say, like, you know, bands like Widespread Panic or, like, like I said, Sister Hazel. Or, you know, 
I mean, they kind of have like a bit of a jam band, you know, sound, but they're not totally jam band. They're like, you know, they're kind of like uh, a bit like semi-sonic, you know, total wet sprocket, you know, fucking, you know, a lot of good 90s bands that I could totally list right now. But, you know, I'm just rambling and like um, all the other stuff on this album is pretty awesome. You know, there's, uh, you know, I couldn't tell you like which uh, track on this album is my favorite, but I can tell you that if you are into bands like, you know, Widespread Panic or even like My Morning Jacket, you know, they're kind of like that, you know, and like I said, one of the members of this band nowadays, you know, he's part of that group. And so, uh, fuck, I would, um. If you could find this at like, you know, used at like, uh, you know, the clearance section at half price books or, you know, in um, at Goodwill or any of that shit, I would pick this band. I would pick this album up. Like I said, it's the only at full length album that they've made. You know, I'm not, they're, um, their EPs are incredibly hard to find. So... I would say just, um, you know, look them up on Discogs for sh before you want to find this album and just uh, see for yourself. If you can find this anywhere, pick it up, play, put it on your computer and crank it up. So, Collapsis, their, full, their only full length album, Dirty Wake, released from Universal Records. And that's it. Thanks for watching.